Hey everyone, this is uh, another update with my uh, tank. Uh, been very recent, maybe a couple weeks since my last one. And uh, between my last video and this video, I had a uh, an issue with my JBJ tank. Uh, the power that uh, powers the uh, main LED lights uh, blew and uh, made my room smell like uh, like you know burnt plastic, pretty much it had that burnt smell to it. Uh, but I did call JBJ. I uh, I think I was a little over the warranty. I think it only covered for six months. But I explained my situation, and uh, with no hesitation, they actually had great customer service. They shipped me out another uh, power unit for free, which I saw online would have cost me at least ninety five dollars or more. Um, I did pay him seventeen bucks because I wanted to expedite the shipping because, of course, Labor Day just passed, and they said uh, since I'm in New York and they're from California. It would have took five business days. I would have had to wait another week. And to be honest with you, my clan, my coral wouldn't probably would survive that long. Uh, which brings me to the note of getting a backup for everything. I do have a backup pump. I do have a backup heater. And now I have a backup uh, 10K light that's a T5. I mean, it's nothing to brag about, but it's enough to survive until you get fixed the situation. Uh, and I also do have a generator too if I lose power completely so uh, that I protect uh, my animals here. Uh, of course, is a huge investment. Um, you know, a $200 generator to keep it running is, is what it cost me for one of my corals alone. So you can do the math. Uh, you know, the situation you could run to. We just actually had the Hurricane Irene pass by recently. Luckily, I didn't lose power, but everybody in my family had. And uh, believe my not my generator got into some use by my in-laws. So uh, I did have some addition. I am trickling to the SPS world. I did get some RA uh, SPS coral. I did see in my last video. I did get a uh, a pink polyp uh, Montibora capricornis. But over here, this is a green uh, Demi uh, coronis. I, I don't know if I'm saying it right. I mean, a little scientific name has a nice green on the uh, LED lights. It's very, very uh, full with the uh, SPS. You can see they're out right now. Um, everything is. I actually doing this at night, so all my uh, most of my coral closed up shop for the night for a little while. As you can see, my toadstool is not doing anything. It's actually receded, which is the first time I've probably seen it. It's pretty cool looking how uh, how everything's going. Uh, again, my scoli here is always getting sand out, and I'm always blowing sand off of it because Freckles, the uh, jawfish, is, uh, he's not there right now, but uh, always like blowing sand over there. The, uh, as you can see here, the this thing has about five heads right now. And I uh, bought it originally with the main head here, which got huge, and then it's just grew head. So this uh, dendro is doing very, very well. And I don't never seen another dendro like this. I always see a dendro with a white skeleton around it. This is the first one that's soft, and it's not a sun coral like I have in the back. So it's definitely a dendrophilia, uh, but i never seen it once one. It might be a rare one. Okay, so going on this side, this is a, uh, a purple uh, digitata. It's hard to see with the uh, coloring, but uh, it was on a frag, and this piece broke off, so I put it on here too as well. Um, and then over here is the orange digitata. All these, uh, except for the uh, Capricornus here, the Monty, uh, are all are a uh, coral. So, and most of the time, you know, rather get some uh, tank ray stuff than wild stuff anyway. Uh, it does better in your tank and you're uh, limiting your carbon footprint of destroying the habitat that's out there because uh, this hobby has become very, very popular. There's uh, Freckles, the uh, the culprit of spinning sand on that coral there. And you can tell here, he's a very happy fish in this tank. Um, he swims everywhere. Um, he hangs out in his hole. This is his other favorite spot. And you can tell he just rides the, uh, I guess, the current. And my electric... Uh, Scallop. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there underneath the rocket. Keeps them moving over there. There you can see the little thing. I have to clean this glass here, but um, you know that's what's going on here. The sponge looks like it's growing a little bit. Uh, I glued it over here because it wasn't just doing good. Oh, here's my one of the three stooges. 
he's separated from the pack, and then the other two are over back there. Um, I don't know what he's doing by himself over here. Usually, uh, usually when he gets close over here, the uh, the clowns chase him out of there, and they don't like him too close to those power heads. And there's uh, maybe two clowns in the background over in the back. Um, but yeah, that's a little strange that he's back here himself. They usually, you know, you can see the other ones there. They school up all day, which is pretty cool, and they move around. But they usually sleep up there at night, and they hang up on top. There, yeah, freckles. If you can see right there, very that little yellow. There's uh, this flipper, my uh, goldest yellow yeah, or yellow assessor, whatever they call it, the basslet right there. Um, he's right in the middle. If you go look, there's his eye. He's in his little rock there. That's pretty cool. Uh, the Yasha Gobis have been coming out. Oh, there, there he is. Huh. He's been coming out more and more lately. And maybe I'll feed him a little bit more. Maybe get a little snack. Uh, his pistol shrimp he always hangs out with. But uh, they come out more and more. Usually at night or early in the morning. That's when they uh, do. My female that I originally bought wasn't shy. And the male was, and I guess ever since they moved in, she came became more shy and hangs out more in the hall than out. So, but you know, they're doing healthy, they're having babies, so they're happy, and they got the little shrimp as a, a servant for them. And my play coral, which I always love. There you go. And my clan did survive that power which I was very concerned about yeah. so I'll keep you updated and see how SPS Coral do in my tank um, I actually left a message at JBJ I'll actually post a comment about the par level that these LED tanks give out uh, I, I, the only research I found was the these uh, that the LED tanks uh, give equivalent par levels as their 150 watt H2I tanks, which I couldn't find out the par levels on that. So um, hopefully they'll get back to me with a, a clear answer because I'm uh, looking to get a one acro, which I want to put at the corner over here because it has a lot of room to grow. Uh, but they require more light, and um, I mean, the light looks great in this tank, and the, I believe the par level is, is going to be enough for SPS Coral, but I just want to double check before I dive in. I was thinking to get maybe a Red Planet uh, Acro, which is pretty cool looking, and uh, see how that does in my tank, but finally dived into the SPS end of it. Before, this was mainly an S LPS Coral tank with a lot of fish, uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. So there you go, guys. I'll keep you guys updated. And for those nano guys out there, um, I'm pretty impressed so far with the LED tank uh, and the uh, actually customer service of the, uh, the JBJ company. All right, so stay tuned, and I'll keep you guys updated with all my coral.